Hot Happy Tuesday. Tuesday. Cause it's pretty damn hot in here. Hot, it's hot. My name is Alan. And my name's Nick. And welcome into, into the, the dungeon. dungeon. This week we're jumping straight into the thick of the action, as Shrew had wandered off from his companions in search of what was making a raucous deep in the woods. He had stumbled across a small troop of orcs being led by an anchorite. After seeing them, he decided to cast Erupting Earth. And that's where we're picking up this week. Where exactly are you casting this Erupting Earth spell? (laughs) Are you sure you remember incorrectly? Is that what I did? <laughs> yeah, you certainly did. Oh, wow. I would like to try and get as many as possible. There was one anchorite at the front and then six other orcs following him, right? That's correct. So I want to center it where I catch the six... Well, if I can catch everyone, good. If not, the six following orcs. Okay, so yeah, you can't get everybody. You can either get the anchorite and four orcs or you can get the six orcs. Yeah, then the six hawks. And what save was this? That would be a dexterity saving throw. Alrighty then, here we go. First roll of the night. Starting off with a big old six. Yes, does not save. Ooh, does not save. Keep them low, bro. The third one does not save either. Yes. That was a natural two. It's a big old 14. Ah, just saves. That's a spell save DC is 14. That's an 18... Plus one, which saves. Thirteen, which does not save. Yeah, only two save, not bad. Let's go. <laughs> All right, impressive. Nine, ten, and eleven. So that's a total of thirty damage. Get it! Get it! Okay, thirty. What a spell! Erupting Earth. Okay, so that's taken out four of the orcs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit! <laughs> And the other two are panting and wheezing and looking on death's door. Awesome. I'm going to ask you to roll for initiative. Okay, can I get something else in, like, before initiative or... No, that's in says, All right. that spell has certainly alerted them to the point where we'll need an initiative call. Okay, for Shrew it's a total of 14, Fena 10, and Fabian 2. Poor old Fabian. It's going to be the brunt of some Shrew jokes again, I feel. <laughs> I'm going to roll for the orcs. Okay, so the order of initiative will be Shrew. All right. The Anchorite. Oof. Fenner, the two remaining orcs, and then Fabian. Okay. So what's Shrew doing? If I speak using the Stone of Sending, would that count as a turn? Yeah, that would be an action. Mm. And hiding would be an action as well, so... Yeah. I mean, you can take some cover if you want behind some hedges or a tree. I want to walk behind a tree. I wouldn't use my action to hide, but I'll be behind a tree. So, you know, if they look in my direction, if they have noticed where that came from, they'd obviously see where I've hidden. And then I want to use my action to say to Fen and Fabian, Fen and Fabian, there's been a slight problem. Uh, Hurry towards me. I imagine they saw where I ran off to, yeah? Yeah. That's what I'm going to say then. Okay, so it's over to the anchorite. He's going to make a dash behind one of the trees. That's going to be his turn, and it's going to be over to Fenna. And coming for the Stone of Sending, you hear, Oh, Shrew, we're on our way! And she's going to use her action to dash. It's then over to the Orcs. Both Orcs have dashed to hide behind a tree as well. Now it's over to Fabian, who's also going to make a dash towards Shrew. He manages to get 60 feet towards you. He's now just 40 feet away from Shrew's position. And on that note, it's over to Shrew. I'm going to just use my action to hide and stay where I am. Okay, I'm going to ask you to give me a blind stealth roll then, to hide. Shrew not doing anything else? No, I'm staying there for now. This anchorite has heard this commotion coming through the woods, and as he turns his attention towards where it's coming from, he sees Fabian and Fenner running through the trees. He casts his gaze on Fabian as he starts running towards that general direction, chanting something under his breath and waving his hands around. Suddenly points his finger like a gun. Going to need Fabian 
to give me a dexterity saving throw. Total of 15. Faven just saves. <laughs> Good. That's the end of his turn. It's over to Fenna. Is Fenna going to dash as well? Fenna, seeing something try and hit Fabian, is going to look sideways. Does she see? Fabian's a silent. Yeah, she sees the anchorite. Okay, she's going to stop on her tracks and cast Guiding Bolt. Okay, so she's going to have to move 10 feet forward to be within range. Okay, she does that. She moves 10 feet towards the anchorite and casts it as a level 3 spell. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What is it? total of nine. That is not hit. Damn it. What a waste of spell. She'll now then kind of disbelieve, turn around and carry on running towards Shrew. It's over to the two orcs. They're going to dash towards Fenner and Fabian using their aggressive perk, which allows them to dash as a bonus action. And they're going to let loose a javelin each at disadvantage. This is the first javelin. Woefully misses as it gets lost in the canopy. Nice. The second one. It's a 19 to hit Fenner. Oh, Fenner. I thought you meant Fabian. Yeah, that, that hits. That's a total of six piercing damage to Fenner. And she actually feels this. Ooh. Those are some expensive javelins. So it's a Fabian. How far is Fabian from these two new orcs that have appeared? He's 60 feet away from these two orcs. And they look rather worse for wear. So Fabian's gonna take his lumbo out. This is the new shiny one, yeah? Yeah. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's plus one. That's plus one. So he's gonna try and fire to hit those orcs. That's a total of eight to hit. That is not hit. Damn it. He's got his second turn right, so he's gonna try again. Same orc. Okay. That's much, much better. 17 plus 5, 22 to hit. That will certainly hit. That's a total of four damage. This orc's down on one knee as the arrow strikes him, true in the chest. He's gurgling blood, one hand propping himself up from the forest floor. He looks like he's about to die. He could bloody well do so. So then Fabian is going to turn around and carry on running towards Shrew. Okay, his movement takes him to within 10 feet of Shrew. All right, and that's his turn then. Then it's over to Shrew. So I'm going to run up towards those orcs. Okay. Which puts me at... 10 feet from one, and I want to cast Thorn Whip. All right, new spell. Yeah, I've had it since the beginning. It's a cantrip, really. And I'd create a long vine-like whip covered in thorns that lashes out at my command toward a creature in range. It's 30 feet range, actually. I thought it was less. I need to make a spell melee attack against it, and it takes 1d6 piercing damage if I hit it. Okay. If the creature is large or smaller... I can pull the creature up 10 feet closer to me. So I'm going to roll and try and hit, okay? Okay. Wish me luck. Good luck. My fingers are crossed. <laughs> I'm sure they are. You jinxed it. <laughs> That's a total of 10. That does not hit. Mm. Well, shucks. Okay, that's my turn. Okay, so it was the anchorite then. He's seen you breaking your cover and running towards these orcs. You see his eyes opening wide in disbelief. As a grin starts to form. Has he recognized me? You don't know yet. Where my curly locks and everything. Well, you've got a flaming red mustache. <sighs> yeah, that was a step too far to shave that one off. You see this anchorite start to wave his hands up in the air. And you see a storm cloud appearing in the shape of a cylinder, 10 foot tall, with a 60 foot radius. Oh. You're seeing these sparks of lightning formulating. Oh no. I'm going to need Shrew, Fabian, and Fenner to make a dexterity saving throw. Ooh, baby. Do the orcs have to roll a save? No. Why, why ever not? Because he's cast it so the radius oh. stops just at Shrew. All oh, right. He's a clever boy. Yeah. Okay, first for Shrew. Wish me luck. Good luck. Talking to the listeners. I don't, oh. I don't trust you. <laughs> I was talking to you first, but you I, you made me roll a four, so now I'm talking to the listeners. Um, 13 for Shrew. That does not save. Fena. Oh boy. Oh no, I thought it was a six. 16 plus two is 18. That saves. Great. And dear old Fabian. 15 total. Just saves. Nice one. 
Still takes half damage, though. Oh, really? Yeah. Here we go for damage. Wish me luck. Uh, no, I'm not going <laughs> to wish you luck. How many ro- d- dice are you rolling? 3d10. Yeah, it's not that bad. Actually, it's pretty shit. It's a total of 10 damage for Shrew. Oof, okay. And 5 each for Fenner and Fabian. Could it be much worse? Indeed. It's over to Fenner, then. Fenner is going to cast Sacred Flame on one of the normal orcs, not the Anchorite. Okay. The one that looks worse for wear. Okay, he's going to roll his deck saving throw. Oh, he does not make it. Yes. That was a 5 plus 1. That's a total of 8. Oh, he gone. Yeah, one less. He gone. He collapses on the floor. Is Fenner moving? Fenner is going to move closer to the Anchorite, but she wants to try and hide behind the tree. You know, not actively hide, but hide in the sense that she's behind the tree using it as cover. So Fenner starts running towards Shrew and the orcs. And after 25 feet, she comes across a tree just behind Shrew, where she can take some cover. Nice. Well, she does that. So the last remaining orc's going to rush up to Shrew. He's got his bad axe in hand, and Shrew can see it glistening in the light. Looks silvered. Shit. That's a 16 to hit. Oh, baby. That hits. Okay, so here comes the damage roll. Oh, baby. That's a 14. Oh, that hurts. 14 slashing damage, and you most certainly feel it. Ugh, what is this? Normally these kind of attacks don't don't hurt. What is going on? And you feel a... <laughs> suddenly, you've got a full sprouted tail. Ooh. It's burst through your pants. And on that note, it's over to Fabian. Fabian is going to draw his bow again and fire... An arrow at the last remaining orc. Okay, roll. 22 to hit. Yeah, that will hit. That's a total of 6 damage. He's down. The arrow strikes him just above the chest where the neck and the chest meet. Yes. Sinks in there and he collapses in front of Shrew. Is the next action he has to use an attack? It has to be two attacks, right? He can't use the action to kind of put away his bow. That's correct. So he's going to draw his bow again and this time try and hit the anchorite. Go for it. 17 to hit. That hits. Come on, Fabian. Big damage. Big damage. 10 total damage. Yeah. The arrow hits him in the arm. But he just snaps it off. So is a shrew then. Okay, shrew isn't going to mess around anymore. He's going to wild shape into a constrictor snake. So after turning, he's going to make his way towards the anchorite. When I reach it. I'm going to constrict it. 21 to hit. That hits. That's 2d8 damage. That's a total of 14 damage. 14. And the target is grappled. Okay, it's over to this anchorite then, who is now restrained. You see him waving his arms around as best as he can. You see the silvery lights come down upon you. You recognize this only too well as a moonbeam. Mmm, bastardo. That's all he's going to do. It's over to Fenna. Fena from there is gonna peek out from behind the tree and try and cast Sacred Flame again. So dexterity saving throw, I believe with disadvantage, because you've been grappled, restrained. That's correct. That was a 15 and a 16. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you lucky bugger. Yeah, that saves. Judging by my reaction. By a whisker. Mm. Is Fena doing anything else? Just hiding behind the tree again. Or covering behind the tree. So it's a Fabian then. Fabian is going to close the gap between the Anchorite and himself, and he's going to try and fire another arrow to hit the Anchorite. Okay. Again, I believe advantage, right, for Fabian? Yep. Good. Oh, he definitely needed advantage. It's a 1 and a 15. 15 plus 7, 22. That hits. Total of 5 damage. Okay. Is he going for a second attack? Oh yeah, that's right, he has a second, so yeah. Again, 16 and a 2 this time. So, 23 to hit. Yeah, that will hit. 4 damage this time. Okay, is Fabian doing anything else? No, that would be his turn there. So it's over to Shrew then. You're going to have to start your turn with a constitution saving throw. With disadvantage. Why? Because you're a shapeshifter. Oh damn. Am I a shapeshifter? Do you see me turning into triangles? (laughs) (laughs) That's getting old. (laughs) That's getting old. Total 12. That fails. 
No. It's a total of 18 radiant damage. I think that's the most damage ever in this campaign with a moonbeam. And I've used the moonbeam like since, almost since the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a dice. Yeah, somehow I don't, I, I'm not surprised. Is it my turn now then? Yes, it is. Okay, Shrew, for one, wants to try and constrict him again. I think we said that was okay. We were doing it last time I used the snake. So I'm going to roll to hit. With advantage. Thank you. I should have kept quiet. 17 total. That hits. Good. 14 damage. 14. That is correct Oh. Okay, should we do anything else then? Yes. So if I want to move and I'm grappling this person, can I do so? Yeah, you can move him with you. And because you're two sizes larger than him, your movement is not halved. Right. Good. So I just want to move slightly so that he is under the moonbeam and not myself. Oh, tricksy little hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's over to the anchorite who's being dragged into his own moonbeam, which, to clarify for the, our listeners, has been more of a swivel than an actual movement. He's going to have to take a concentration check. That's a six plus two, which is eight, so the moonbeam has dissipated. But he would have dropped it anyway as he was moving into it. They're not going to fall for that tricksy hobbit. Right, so, yeah, well, it, at least it ended the spell. So what's he going to do? That would be my turn there already. Suddenly, beside True, the spectral boar appears. Don't worry, it's not Gothak. Oh, I was going to ask. He's going to attack this giant snake that's constricting his master. That's 17 to hit. Yeah, that hits. It's a total of 7 piercing damage. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. It's not that bad. He's coming around for a second attack. Yeah, that hits. That's 18 plus. That's a total of 8 piercing damage. Well, this little boy hit, hits hard, eh? Yep, he does. That's the end of their turn. So it's now with a Fenner. Fenner again, peeking out from behind the bush. Sacred Flame. Dexterity saving through. With disadvantage. That's correct. He's failed. It's a nine. Yes, 2d8. That's a total of 12 damage for Fenna. Ooh, Fenna. He's starting to look quite hurt now. Is Fenna doing anything else? Just hiding behind the tree again. Yes, it was a Favion. Favion is going to draw an arrow again and try and hit the anchorite. Okay, so do so with advantage. 14 to hit. Just hits. All right. Seven total damage. And he's going to go again. 19 plus 4, 23. That's a crit. That's a crit for Fabian. <laughs> and I roll a 1 on his crit, so 2 plus 2, 4 damage. I think that happened last time as well. Yeah, it did. This anchor I'd certainly seen better days. Fabian is going to get closer to the action now. He's going to try and close the gap between himself and Shrew and the anchorite to try and hit him with his sword next time. All right then, so it's a Shrew. True is going to squeeze, and he's going to try and constrict a bit more. Okay, so roll your attack with an advantage. 17. That hits. Total of 9 damage. 9, you say? 9, I say. How do you want to do this? <laughs> you finally got the killing blow. All right. It's usually fun. Yeah. So I want to, you know, I'm constricting him. So I want to squeeze and squeeze until I see his eyes starting to bulge and until his brain explodes, his head explodes all over, his little pet he just summoned over there, the little boar. Squeeze him to death. And with that, the battle's over as a spectral boar dissipates into nothing. After being splattered. True, has been splattered as well. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> He's starting to make a habit of this, Shrew, running off and... Finding yourself in trouble. Drop the snake act. Fenner, come over here. He's done it again. <laughs> and I drop the snake act, as <laughs> Fabian aptly put it. No, no, Fabian, no. Um, I told you I was going to scout ahead, and indeed I did. It had to be done. So you didn't cast any magical spells or attract any unwarranted attention no yes I, I did but 
That's what I mean. It had to be done. Uh, I saw an opportunity. There was an anchorite by himself. Remember, there's three anchorites. Three. Now we have one less. I had to take the opportunity. They were running away and I had to attack quickly. I knew you you guys would catch up. This isn't like last time where I ran off by myself in the middle of the night. You knew where I was. It had to be done. Oh yeah, at least there's one less. But still you should have waited for us. What if they had caught you? No, as I, I know it was risky, but as I said, they were they were running away. We might have missed the opportunity. Look, I r- running away from you or They would have crossed our path actually and they were chanting something. They were saying traitor, traitor. So I imagine they were going to headhunt Morokub. Oh yes. Perhaps that's why the other orcs were killed. Oh shoo. Yes. You've got a full tail. Hmm. Oh, yes, and uh, as I touched my, my behind. It appears I do. We are running out of time, Fenna. We must hurry. But we we need to look for Morkub. Do I have a tail? She sort of turns over. No, no, you you look fine. But you see that she's got little rat ears. You have some little rat ears, though. Oh, no. I don't want to turn to a rat. We have time. Let's go. Let's look for Morkub, and then we continue. Oh, this better be worth it. If he betrays us, I'll have his head on a stick. Hmm. And I'll see to it. Before I go, I want to quickly inspect all the corpses. Do you think I can carry the silver weapons with me? Because those probably fetch a fair price, right? They'll go for more than a normal weapon does. Okay, so first off, Fabian wants to search for some arrows as well. Arrows that he may have fired and missed. Yeah, he gets his arrows back. I don't think you're going to be able to carry seven battle axes. No, but as many as I could, without kind of encumbering us or anything like that. I'll tell you, you can each carry a battle axe. So that means you can carry three of these silvered battle axes. And you can roll for investigation. With advantage, because the three of us are doing so? Yeah. 18 total with Fenner's modifier. Okay, so you manage to find about 15 gold in assorted coins. You also find on this anchorite's body what you know to be a potion of greater healing. All right. He didn't get a chance to use it. <laughs> On the anchorite as well. You notice that he's wearing these gauntlets with these tusks on the end, as the other ones have. But you notice that these ones seem to be engraved with little lightning bolts in it. Hmm. They are like the melee weapons, the ones that go like the wolverine type weapons. That's correct. Can we take those? Yeah, you can. Can I check what those lightning bolts, if they're magical or anything like that? Yeah, give me an arcane check. Nine total. You're concentrating on them, and it takes a little while, but you do sense some sort of magical power lying within them. Okay, I'll put them on. Nice. Hmm, I feel more powerful already. You feel these wisps of electricity. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Hmm, this will surely come in handy. Onwards, to save Mudbuck. So you're there stood with your bald head, your red moustache your owl goggles, an assortment of chains showing you to be the Gion of Svarada, and now adorned with these wolverine-type claws. Are you also wearing that exquisite cape? Yeah, it's lo- it looks like mine, though, like the old tattered one oh, okay. as of now, but you- you're forgetting my fancy elven boots. Oh yeah, and your fancy elven l- leafy boots. Yeah, I, I look like a hero at this point, let's be honest. I think you look like one of those player characters in an RPG where <laughs> none of the armor sets match <laughs> yeah. but they're just the highest things you got <laughs> yeah that's true a hero a hero <laughs> so what are Shush Robbie's doing then we are heading on the direction that they were heading as they was chanting traitor traitor hopefully we'll find who they were looking for that we imagine was Murkub okay give me a survival check with advantage because there's three of you 12 total. So you start pressing north again. And after a while, you pick up on the trail again. You follow it for a good 20, 25 minutes. You start noticing that there's also blood on some leaves. Hmm, there seems to be blood on some leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Murkobs, I hope. Yes, I, I believe he might have been injured when he fought those insectoids that killed his friends. And he might have straggled all the way here. Let's hurry up before he bleeds to death. Yeah, I just hope we haven't been sent on a wild goose chase. No, no, Fabian. Come on. We've been over this. 
We gotta trust a little more. Hmm. Let's get on then. We push on. So you continue to press on for about another 15 minutes. I'm gonna ask you to give me a perception check. Total of 19. So in the distance, you see a sliver of sunlight piercing through the thick canopy above, casting a soft glow on the forest floor. Against a tree, you see an interplay of light and shadow, dancing across what appears to be an orc's rough features. The sounds of the forest around you playing a symphony of tranquility, oblivious to the turmoil of the battle that just occurred. There's a feel of gentle breeze rustling through the leaves, offering a momentary respite from the stifling humidity that clings to these woods. This orc seems to not have noticed your arrival. He appears to be wounded, is grimacing, and clenching his jaw. Does he look to be Murgub? He does. Fair enough, Ian. Stay in the shadows. Stay hidden in the trees. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna try and help him. If anything dodgy happens, you've got my back, okay? Okay. You see, Fabian, not an arrow. Thank you. I quietly, stealthily walk up to Murgum. Okay, give me a stealth check. With advantage. Silently, you make your way across the forest floor. You're now within 20 feet of Murgum. 15 feet. 10. Now you're right up on him. Has he still not seen me? He has not. Murgum. <laughs> it's me, Shrew. No, what? <laughs> you see him reach for his axe. Come, come down. It's, it's me, Shrew. Oh, I shrew! Yes. How are we being watched? Shh. Quiet. What's wrong? Oh, all the orcs are gathered to help us take over the Circle of Thunder. They're all gone. I, I, I They're know. all gone. I'm sorry. I saw them. I saw the destruction those creatures dealt. That was the Anchorites. Oh, really? They've got a way of summoning those creatures. Hmm. Bastards. They've used them before. The loggers camp. Yes, yes. I was there. I saw it. I killed a few. I, I've just dealt with one anchorite. He was coming here to finish you off. Are you by yourself? I'm the only one that survived. Okay, here, have this. I bring out a potion of feeling and offer him one. Oh, that's too kind, true. But I'll gladly take it. He gulps it down. Can you, can you walk? Right, yeah. Bit slow, perhaps. You're telling me that you took out that anchorite all on your own, true? Well, not me by myself. I'm here with Fena and Thabian. Why, your companions that we met up at the cave? Yes, yes, that's right. Where are they? Well, they're, they're standing back a bit. and I didn't want to attract a lot of attention, but we should get going. They, they send people to kill you off. If they don't come back in a while, they might send more. Hmm. Was the anchor right alone? No, no, he was travelling with six other orcs. That's good. That means there's, you see him sort of trying to count on his fingers. Math obviously isn't his strongest point. I reckon there's less than ten total, including the two anchorites then. Hmm, that's good. I've got a few ideas. We can talk on the way back. So I want to kind of help him up and take him towards Fen and Fabian. Oh, sure. You found him. Yes, yes. He's. I've given him a little pick-me-up and he's doing much better. Hmm. You're not playing double agent here, are you, Mokob? Don't know what you mean, mate. Double what? No, he just means if, if you're going to betray us down the line... Are you serving, are you helping us or her helping the orcs? I've already told him. Trust goes a long way. You've already proven that you are here to help us. You've put your life at risk. That should settle it, Fabian. Mm, I've got my eye on him. Anyway, let's go back to the direction of the Stone Circle. And I have an idea I want to put past you as we walk that way. Okay. So we start heading that direction. Yeah, that will be southwest from where you are. Would we pass where we just defeated the orcs? Yes, you would. Okay. So as I'm walking, I'm explaining. I was thinking that perhaps the best shot at this is splitting them up, as we have already done so. If no one comes back with Murkub's head, perhaps they send another scouting party with another anchorite, or perhaps a few orcs, which we can then pick off. Perhaps we can hide atop the ridge where we just fought and... Surprise them again. Only problem is, we are pressed for time. Well, I suspect that if they're not back, they may... Oh, don't even want to think about it, mate, but... They may want to accelerate the summoning of Gothak. They suspect foul plays about. And then we hurry and we double time towards the stone circle. Let's go. So you start making your way to the southwest as quickly as you can. Long shadows start to be cast across the dense canopy of the Neverwinter Woods. The sun starts to dip behind you, the light now fading through these ancient trees as you feel the air 
crackling with a palpable energy and distant rumbling of thunder echoing through the forest. As you continue to venture forth, a strange mist begins to shroud the forest floor, creating an ominous and eerie ambience. You continue to follow an ancient, overgrown, but a well-travelled path. On the horizon now you see this hill rising through the woods, with an ancient stone circle stood atop it. As you continue your march towards it, the rumbling of thunder grows louder, reverberating through the trees, the occasional flash of lightning illuminating the path ahead, the stones shrouded in another worldly glow. You notice these sparks dancing along the edges of the stones, almost casting an ethereal light. Above you you can see these ominous storm clouds gathering thick and fast. As you reach the bottom of this 90 foot high hill, you just catch a glimpse of two ghastly figures dancing within this henge, surrounded by a number of smaller capering creatures. Give me a perception check. Total of 18. Even through the thunder, you can hear almost like a song being chanted out. Some of these small creatures appear to be these twig blights that you fought before. And you also see a couple of orcs stood atop this hill. And that's where we're going to call it a session. Damn it. So there's more than orcs to contend with. Damn. Orcs. Twig blights. Twig blights. Maybe some vine blights are those that attacked me in the well. Potentially. Those anchor eggs things. Those insect oids. Yeah. And perhaps a thunderbore. And perhaps a thunderbore. It's going to be a hard one. So yeah, I think that's a good place to stop for today. Gives you some time to ponder your approach. Yeah, I'm not going to jump the gun and cast a... (laughs) Not going to cast another erupting over no, here. No, not, not this time round, no. So yeah, that was a quite a quick battle, to be honest. I thought it would last a bit more. Yeah, it was. it's a short episode, this one, to be fair. Yeah, slightly on the shorter side. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come back next week to hear the end of this arc. Or oh, will it be the end of this arc? Perhaps the end of the whole adventure. <laughs> if I, Possibly. If I get a TPK. Who knows? We'll see. But yeah, if you want to hear more of our ramblings post episode, make sure you visit our website, i2td.com. We've got our links to all our good stuff there. And we also have our links to our Buy Me A Coffee, where if you become a member, you can jump in on our Into The Studio reflection episodes. In Buy Me A Coffee, you can also donate potions or other items that you can find in our shop. And that helps us, obviously, in the adventure and allows you to become part of it, too. So if you fancy that, make sure to head on over there. If you can't donate, if you can't financially help us, you can always help us by going to your podcast player of choice or YouTube and like, share, comment, leave a review, whatever you can do. That always helps us tremendously. So thank you very much for that as well. So that's that. And that takes us now to a... That's that. And that's Twitter twat. And that's Er. Twitter twatter. Yeah, that's that. And that's Twitter twatter. Today, in Twitter Twitter, we put out a question. But we left it too late. We left it too late. So, unfortunately, we, ha- we haven't got any. But I did try a challenge this week from one of our Twitter Twitter questions a few weeks back. It was from Anthony. So, that's another point for me in the... <laughs> well, that wasn't an official challenge. <laughs> I guessed his name correctly. So, I'm, I'm adding one point. It's free too. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm giving you one point back. Because the challenge that Anthony gave us, or gave me particularly, was that I had to wish you try and keep my conversations to 20 words or or less. And I tried it this week. The first sentence I said was quite short and sweet in the heat of battle. So I was going well. But when battle finished, (laughs) the first sentence I said after that, I went over the 20 words and I was counting. Like... Perhaps I wasn't counting as I should have, so attentively. Clearly. Yeah, clearly. But I, I had it in my mind, like, I can't go over 20, I can't go over 20, and I went over 20, so yeah, it didn't take just, long. wasn't it? I think it was 21. If you count it, I think Black it was Jack. 21. <laughs> yeah, I went over. So thank you for the challenge, but unfortunately I failed, so that, I would say, gives a point to Nick. So it's 4-2. Yes. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> So, if you can, give us more challenges, more questions, and thank you very much, Anthony. That brings us on now to the last one standing, the end of the episode club. That's correct. You know the drill by now, we give you a password and you insert it in a witty comment, and that way we know that you are the ones with the most constitution to get through all this silliness. Yeah, most loved ones, a closest circle, the Kijo of Masvradas. 
And today's password is, Nick, if you'd be so kind to tell us. I'm all shook up. Oh. So yeah, shook up. That's a password. You said in a comment, any way you want. And we'll keep an eye out for them. That brings us to the real end of the episode. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you join us next time as we delve into, into the, the dungeon. dungeon. Into the dungeon. (laughs) (laughs) Shit. (laughs) It's just been a week. Okay. My name is Alan. And my name is Nick. My name is Alan. And my name is Nick. And welcome. (laughs) 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 My name is Alan. And my name is Nick. And welcome. Welcome. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be a long night. Oh, God. <laughs> Apparently that's a warm up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, go for it. I, I I don't need to get any warmer. Look, 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 I'm listening. Look at me in the light. Listening like a pig. Yeah. <laughs> My anaconda, uh. My anaconda don't want none unless you got orcs, hun.